beautiful warriors. Welcome back to another awesome episode. Today, I have the pleasure and honor of having one of my sisters and friends, Natalie Gregory. So please welcome her. So Natalie, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are. Hello, I ask my name again, is Natalie Gregory. I'm the wife of Manuel Gregory. Um, We've been married now for a while. I think about 10 months now. We got married in June of 2020. Yes, Corona season. Yes. Um, I've been a believer since I was five years old. I come from the family of mom and dad that introduced me to Christ, especially my mom. Um, yeah, so that's basically I... I grew up in the church. Um, I had a youth group leader and a huge youth group that helped me to grow in my faith. And um, I've just been a believer ever since. So. Yeah. No, it's and it's awesome because in this season, um, actually, JP and I attend a church where Natalie has been a member of for a while. So that's actually how we met. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the sweet, sweet, I think the sweet sister that came up to me and embraced me. So I'm really thankful for that. Natalie has a great <laughs> way of loving people. And we find a lot of similarities in who we are. So I'm really grateful for you. And I'm happy that you're get getting to share your story today. Um, and we pray that it will be an impact to other women. So thank you for being with us. All right, Natalie. So um, part of your story, and I know part of this story, is that you are married. And uh, you just shared you're married to Manny. Shout outs to Manny. <laughs> Um, and uh, so marriage is a beautiful God-given blessing that mm -hmm. for some of us, before getting there, there's a process. We go through uphill battles um, in order to, you know, to get there, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. it, it's not an easy road sometimes. So I know that you and I have a, a little bit of similarity around that. So can you please tell us a little bit about your story and how you, you got to marriage? Well, I guess I would just start from my, my biological father. Um, he, he was a pastor and so I was, I guess, an early preacher's daughter. I was, I can remember the age of three. Um, and he, he left my mom and my mom, um, actually had another um, baby. She was, uh, she was like seven months at the time, my younger sister. And he had left us, um, he had sinful issues. So he, he had left us. And so my mom was really hurt and a couple of years later, she ended up getting remarried. So I, I knew there was absence of my biological father. I just wasn't understanding why. And the dad that I have now, he's a great father. Um, he, I actually have two older brothers that come from um, his previous relationship, his past wife. And so um, throughout the years, like he just, he gave a lot to us and everything. Uh, but there was just missing that, that emotional connection, that physical connection that I so longed for, yeah. you know, but he gave the shirt off his back. Like he, he did so much. It's just, there was something missing. So when I got to middle school, um, I experienced my first boyfriend actually at in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And at first I didn't know what the whole thing about, you know, having a boyfriend was about. People were like, Natalie, <laughs> it's time girl. You need to get with him. <laughs> So this guy, um, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> he took an interest in me a lot and we ended up dating for about a year and a half. And I, at that time, I just, I didn't realize how many things I felt, I felt like I was missing, you know, the mm. cuddles, the, the I love you's, the mm. holding the hands that, you know, that yeah. that us women like. So right. um, that just started the time of me wanting different relationships. Of course, that relationship didn't last because we were really young. Yeah. And so after that, I had another relationship with a guy in high school. I guess we were called high school sweethearts for, yeah. we were together for five years and I ended up being engaged to him, but it didn't work out for different reasons. We were just very, very young and there was a lot of emotion, uh, immaturity, yeah. you know, on both parts. And then from there, I just had different relationship to relationship with relationship. And I was still growing in the Lord. I ended up um, having a um, really close best friend um, that actually started discipling me a lot mm -hmm. more in God and learning about obedience was. Mm -hmm. um, and I was still learning more about uh, sexual purity because I made that vow to the Lord when I was really little that I was going to wait till marriage. Mm -hmm. Although I slipped up in one of my relationships, you had to wait a little while longer. And I ended up feeling really remorseful and mm -hmm. guilty 
right. you know, that I was put in that situation. And I took both responsibility for it, but I just knew that I really wanted to wait again and try again later. So yeah. I, I had maybe three other relationships after that. And I ended up, um, my previously before this marriage, getting married to a guy and cause I was approaching 30 and we were dating for a couple of years and we got engaged after a year and a half yeah. and I was thinking, okay, I guess this is it, <laughs> mm. you know, yeah. there were red flags definitely mm. with him. And I remember my mom and my dad and my friends were like, Natalie, are you sure? I don't know about this guy. I really mm. don't know. I'm seeing this here and my church family and my pastor he was like, Natalie, I don't know about this guy. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, you know, mm-hmm. I was hesitant for a little bit. But then right. I just went through with it. And God was knocking on my heart the whole time. The Holy Spirit mm-hmm. was like, girl, no, no, mm-hmm. no, no. But I ignored it. And sadly, I ended up suffering a horrific 10 months of marriage. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. It was awful. It was a twilight zone. Um, there was infidelity on his part. And it's mm-hmm. a lot of emotional abuse. And mm-hmm. as well as just negligence and abandonment. Mm-hmm. So yeah. by God's grace, God helped me to get through that. Mm-hmm. And we, like I said, we were just married for 10 months and we ended things. And I came to my breaking point. I was like, okay, God, I was rushing. I wasn't listening mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. I just want you and me, Lord. Like I don't need mm-hmm. anybody else. If, even if I'm single for the rest of my life, I don't want to walk out of it, um, disobedience because mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, when he tells you no, when he sends other people around you, when you ignore mm-hmm. that, there's there's consequences. Mm-hmm. And sadly, a lot of us make that those mm-hmm. choices. But I feel like God had to bring me to that point where he was just like, okay, trust me, trust me. Mm-hmm. And I think about my favorite verse where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, mm-hmm. lean not to your own understanding, mm-hmm. in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will mm-hmm. keep your path straight. And there's another one where it says, like, the man plans his ways, but the yes. Lord directs your steps. And that's right. so true. Like, mm-hmm. you have your Amen. Idea, like, guys, since you're not moving fast enough, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And he's like, okay. Okay. Let's see what happens. And we'll like, let you do that. Good but luck you with still that. had me. You still had me. So good luck, little girl. I'm gonna be here when you fall. Right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, um, after a year, after just being, you know, single after my divorce, I was I was going through some healing stages and I was fine with being single. You know, I was just mm. me and the Lord and I was with my my girlfriends and just serving a lot in the church and then um out of the blue my <laughs> husband here Manny, comes Manny. <laughs> Manny comes to the church with some of his siblings and one of his mm-hmm. guy friends and um i usually introduce myself to new people at the church that's just mm-hmm. what i do mm-hmm. and we ended up talking really well and we hit it off and i didn't know he liked me like that mm-hmm. and he was doing his research around the, the town i guess you would say <laughs> talking to my pastor and some of my our mutual friends that we had and we after that we just ended up getting close and ended up dating and God was just showing me his character mm. complete his character like everything I wanted that I didn't know I needed like mm. just a servant's heart was huge for me someone who's humble someone that loves other people you know and mm. you know he wasn't he's not perfect by any means but he's perfect for me mm. And he had to earn my trust because he was really seeking to try to understand me. And he was really good with that. And he helps me also to uh, forgive my biological father Mm. because that is huge. Before marriage, you cannot Mm. bring those Mm. traumas. You're not going to be perfect by any means, but you cannot bring those traumas into your marriage without trying to get help and forgiving because forgiveness is huge. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. yeah, we've been married now for 10 months mm. and he was so yeah. worth waiting. And I, mm-hmm. I feel, <laughs> I feel like if I could tell my younger self, girl, be patient. He is coming. Right. Mm-hmm. The Lord got you. Yep. No, I love, you know something. And that's, that's what I think that's in that same way. Like that's where I say that both of us have that similarity because I, I always say that my marriage, I feel like, is one of the biggest redemptions that mm-hmm. I've had because mm-hmm. I was in the same boat, right? Like, we both faced daddy issues, right? Yeah. Like, I had my father um, for my my 
you know, child years, but teenage years, which are the pivotal you yes. know, points of yeah. life, yeah. I didn't have him physically in my life. Like I knew he loved me, but it was just like phone conversations. It wasn't the the tenderly love, the the mm-hmm. tangible love of like I'm here, you know, and mm-hmm. all the things that women need: assurance, protection, love, care, right? Like nurture. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that too. And so, yeah, like unconsciously, those things do push you to seek love elsewhere. So in our in our situation, a lot of times it, it kind of transitions to another male figure, which yes. a lot of times is a relationship, yes. right? So, yeah. And so that, that was also like my struggle and not understanding, you know, that I, that um, I was worth having something bigger and better, right? In the sense of something that was that that's solid, that's beautiful and that's God given. Um but I didn't come to understand that until I actually met the Lord and the Lord dealt with those broken areas of my life. So in the same way, like I know and something that is really interesting is that I know that whenever you share these type of stories with people or with women, a lot of them find a lot of connection to it. You know what I mean? I recently was talking to somebody who the same concept, like a lot of us have daddy issues because yes. sometimes you could have a father, you know, as you mentioned, that's physically present, but is not f- there, you know, right. that it's not it's not providing the love you need in the way you need it. Right. Exactly. And so um, you've you've already touched on, you know, what kind of impact did it have on you not to have the type of fatherly love that you felt you needed. Yeah. Right. Like you yeah. you shared that it impacted you in in the ways that, you know, you you sought out love elsewhere mm-hmm. and. And again, these are things that unless you come face to face with the love of the father, the love of God, you don't really you won't understand it until that happens. Right. Like then we know, Okay, cool. Like now I understand why I was doing these things, why these behaviors were happening. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really love that in the same manner, the Lord came through and provided you with Mm -hmm. what you needed. Right. Like the man that you needed to lead your home. Um, Mm -hmm. So that that's something that's really beautiful. And um, something that you are doing in this season, which I also want to sort of touch on, is that you're leading other young women. Right. Like you're leading other young women who's a lot of stories. So we call it sisterhood. You know, you're leading it. I support in it. And it's really cool because. (laughs) That is exactly the heart. The heart is to uplift other women, to see their worth, to see, you know, who they are, to see what they're worth having, you know, and and what God desires potentially, you know, intentionally for them to be. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that because that is that is a big part of what you're doing. You're really intentional. And I love that you're really all in and your heart is to uplift women. So I think that's beautiful um can you you know i know this like kind of goes sideways to what we're talking about can you tell us a little bit about what that experience has been for you and specifically speaking how that connects you know to your story and what that means to uplift other women well there's one thing i after also forgot to mention um before i got married to manny i did have to go to counseling myself mm-hmm. right because there were still a lot of other issues mm-hmm. that obviously he could not handle that right. i needed to get just work through myself, like mm-hmm. my identity in Christ even more, knowing that God is my father, you know, and there's no perfect father mm-hmm. figure on this earth, but my heavenly father. Mm-hmm. And I had to accept that the dad I have now, he loves me very much, but he only knows how to love me the way he knows how to. Right. And I had to learn to accept that, you know, for who he is. So I had mm-hmm. to die to those feelings of wanting to feel a certain way and really, right. really just trust in God of who he says I am in him. Now, um, with the girls I have now, it's about five of them, young, young twenties. They're so Mm -hmm. adorable. (laughs) And I feel like if I wouldn't have went through that season, I wouldn't able to really empathize Mm -hmm. or give them strategic information or encouragement to get to what they're going through. Because a lot of young ladies, you know, like them, they have new relationships as Mm -hmm. well. You know, some of them have past issue traumas that they're also trying to work through. And right. yeah, I also shared with them, you know, having to get counseling and also mm-hmm. um, getting closer to the Lord and really um, putting their identity into practice, like going yeah. through the scriptures and saying how Christ says you are. Like, I right. am a child of God. I'm forgiven. Mm-hmm. I'm accepted. Those things are so important mm-hmm. to really just get into your head. It's one right. thing to put in your head, but also live it out. So if you have to read those things every day, look at yourself in the mirror and say, right. I am a daughter of the king, you know? Yeah. 
um, I'm a royal priesthood. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's a beautiful, it's, right. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And the Lord really wants to woo us in that way. He wants mm-hmm. us to feel close to him and to trust him because he has so many things that he wants to do with us, but we just mm-hmm. have to just let go yeah. and surrender. No, you I know? agree. So it's just, it's been a gift. It has been challenging. Mm-hmm. You know, I love them dearly, but also as a leader, you know, you have to allow them to go on their pace. Mm-hmm. There's going to be times where you want them to move a little bit faster, but because of their season, you know, sometimes you just have to be like, okay, I got to love you where you are mm-hmm. right now. I'm here for yeah. you if you're not ready to open up in this area. Yeah. But a lot of them are starting to just really open up as well. So I just, I can't wait to see what the Lord has in mm-hmm. store. Yeah. No, and you're really good at that. You really, you have ways of showing love that it. I think a lot of people don't have. So I think that that's something that's really beautiful about who you are and who God has made you to be. That's truly a gift. And yeah. I'm truly honored to be loved by you and to yeah. have you in my life and that these girls get to have you also. You're definitely <laughs> a gift. So, um, As far as like, you know, the mending, because something you did mention was um, counseling. And, you know, I'm an advocate for that, too. Um, I think that counseling, it's important. I remember not too long ago, I was having a little crisis where I was like experiencing anxiety to high levels. You know, there was a lot going on. And I reached out to a friend who is a, uh, a, you know, therapist. And I was like, hey, I need to talk to you. I need a process. So I love that you touched on that because a lot of times is that too, right? Like, so talking to people in your circle, people that are always going to lead you to truth and getting professional support also, Mm -hmm. you know, that people Mm -hmm. that are going to give you, explain to you the ins and outs of like what you're experiencing. So um, can you tell me what, when is it that you feel like you begin to to mend and how, I mean, you touched on the counseling piece, but are there any other aspects of when do you feel like your healing began, you know, from the brokenness you had experienced and then it's stepping into, you know, your marriage. And and obviously the process never really ends, right? Like we're in a constant <laughs> I, process. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like I was more confident in myself. I, it was just really the Lord mm. and time, really. Just right. going to that counselor and she was just digging up things from my childhood, mm. from early ages, from elementary school to when I felt yeah. accepted. I mean, I had a lot of friends. But then you also have those times where you want to satisfy everybody. Mm. You, you don't want people yep. to be mad at you, you know? Mm-hmm. So those things also play into a role in your relationships. Like you don't want that mm-hmm. your spouse to be angry with you. And it's going to happen. You got to get right. over it, you know? And yeah. you're going to get mad at them, you know? And you just mm-hmm. got to trust God in the situation, you know? Because your spouse can't be your everything. Right. <laughs> God has nope. to be your everything. And a lot of Correct. times people think that once they get married, I will feel whole and complete. Like mm-hmm. God, if God is not whole and complete in your life, it's not going to work because that person, mm-hmm is flawed right that person has their own Mm -hmm. life and you need to have your own life and um the lord so i strongly recommend that and there's no shame in getting counseling Mm -hmm. i think that nope there's this stigma you know a lot of i know with an african-american community there are sometimes a stigma like i don't need counseling i don't need this Mm -hmm. but it's damaging Mm -hmm. it is such a lie yeah you need that and there's nothing wrong with that it's 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 Mm -hmm. a mature healthy process. If you want any relationship to work in your life, working through your issues is very necessary or it just won't last. It won't work. Yeah. No. And then, and you know, and that touches on the concept of baggage. I mean, you, like before JP and I got married, we did premarital counseling. We, We touched on things that were Hey, like maybe these are things you won't ne- necessarily think about, but if you mm-hmm. actually sit down and process exactly. with someone, like yo, oh, okay, let me, oh, okay, that makes sense. Let's talk about that. Let's process this. Let's, you know, and I think that's really helpful. Like him and I advocate big time with new couples. Like you know, you need to have premarital counseling before you get into marriage. You exactly. need to deal with your baggage. You need to deal with all that because <laughs> you don't want to bring all. It's like bringing backpacks into you know, at the the trip of a lifetime. Like, why would you want to bring these heavy rocks with you? Like, come on now. Like, nobody wants to do that. So I I really, I really love that. And like, again, I, I really am so encouraged to see how you have been able to conquer through, you know, all that you've experienced and being able to get to this place where now you serve, you know, as, as a encouragement and light to other young women, you know, around you. So that's really awesome. So Natalie, um, if there is any woman that's listening now that you, that, you know, that they feel like they connect to what you're saying. Right. And I think this is actually something extremely, you know, common, like a lot of us, deal with the whole daddy issue scenarios. Um, And something that you did say that I really love is that 
a lot of times we do forget that we are all humans and we're all broken <laughs> people. And the people that, let's say in our case, like the father aspect of things, like I, I mean, I loved my father dearly. I knew he loved me dearly, but yeah. he loved me in the way that he, you know, could right yes, like as exactly. you said right because my dad had a had a, a broken upbringing he yeah. was an orphan raised in the orphanage and mm -hmm. so you know when you you know that then you begin to understand you extend grace to people right exactly. like you extend you know and you know like okay I was loved but for whatever reason he just didn't you know couldn't be physically with me so understanding and forgiving and all that but obviously that's easier said than done I mean you really yeah. have to go through a process and more so allowing God to deal with you so that then you can yeah. extend grace and forgiveness right so if there's a woman listening now that you know can connect to everything you've said you know perhaps that they've had broken relationship with their father that they're still trying to work through or they don't understand why you know they feel broken and they feel like they have to run from relationship to relationship or perhaps you know they've had a father present physically but not fully there you know present emotionally or whatever if she's listening now um what is encouragement you can leave with her? Something that would resonate, something that uh, would give her hope. First, I want to say I understand completely. I get you. There's a lot of things I had to go out the years with just accepting the reality of what happened, you know, and mm -hmm. I had to learn to even start praying for him because you'd be surprised when once you start praying for someone mm -hmm. that has hurt you, especially as a father figure, you mm -hmm. begin to have compassion for them. Mm -hmm. And it took a while. I'm not saying this happens overnight. Trust mm -hmm. me. But once you start doing those things and also just getting closer to your heavenly father, mm -hmm. he'll show you even more, you know, that he is perfect and that you have an advocate and it'll allow you to eventually, yes, to forgive mm -hmm. the father that you had before, you know, and like, like, um, Velma said as, as well, like, giving them grace and mercy because like, I know my dad, he is like, his mom wasn't an affection mother. She was just mm -hmm. go, go, go. You know, she was a house, um, household mom and she was a teacher. She, she loved the way she was, but she was not, definitely not a touchy feely woman. So mm -hmm. he inherited that from her and that's not his fault. It's just the way he was upraised. And so I had to learn to love him the way he is. And I, I love him regardless you know, but I, like I said, I get you and um, you got to go through those the, the process of hurting and healing and dying to that, that um, vision of what you thought your dad should be for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much again for being with us. Um, I know and I pray that this will be of encouragement to, all, you know, the women, the women that listen. And um, I know for sure it's going to touch hearts. So um, we're so honored to have you. I love you, my friend. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thank you for listening. If you would like to connect with me, you can follow us at Beautiful Warrior Ministry on Facebook and Instagram. If you need support, prayer, or desire sisterhood, I am here to serve you. Don't forget to tune in next week for our new episode. Blessings!